With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Thursday, May 26, 2016. The Michigan Senate recently passed a bill affecting which parts can be used to repair certain vehicles. Michigan Representative Peter Patalia of Presque Isle introduced in March 2015 the Motor Vehicle Service Repair Act that enumerates the rules by which auto repair shops operate. The bill details how contracts can be made, the requirements for registering as a certified mechanic, and a controversial provision that requires repair shops to use original equipment manufacturer parts on vehicles that are either within the duration of the original warranty or five years after manufacture, whichever is first. The requirements, according to the Senate version of the bill, apply to vehicles no more than five years old and require major component parts to be replaced with OEM or equivalent parts if necessary. Major component parts include engine, transmission, various body panels, seat belts, and airbags. According to MichiganCapitalConfidential.com, repair shop special interest groups do not agree with the new rules regarding repairs to relatively new cars. Jim Sherman, owner of Sherman Auto Parts in Washington Township, says that aftermarket parts are an equally safe, less expensive, and viable option for auto repairs. Sherman warned that this apparent affront to consumer choice will drive up repair and insurance costs for consumers. Representative Patalia, the sponsor of the legislation, says that the original intent of the bill was to protect the vehicle and the passengers and to assure that all safety components are of the highest quality, without directly noting recent recalls from airbag manufacturer Takata. Patalia says that he does not fully support the Senate's version of the bill, and since some language was changed from the original bill, it is now awaiting a vote on the House floor. The State Senate Energy and Technology Committee on Wednesday passed legislation that intends to overhaul a state energy law. Emily Lawler on MLive.com reports that this legislation addresses how utility companies are are regulated, as well as addressing some ways in which customers interact with utility companies. The bills reflect multiple years of testimony and studies, and some of the provisions in the bill include a requirement for 35% of energy to come from so-called clean energy sources by 2025, as well as an increase in how much a utility company can be reimbursed for creating energy waste reduction programs. Senator Mike Knopfs of Battle Creek says that the latter program is a good investment and in some cases every dollar spent to reduce energy waste can generate a fourfold savings. The bill also allows utility companies a flexibility in choices of where to purchase power outside of clean energy sources in order to guarantee that customers receive a constant supply of power. The Office of Inspector General in the State Department concluded a study into the use of non-departmental communication system use within the Office of the Secretary of State. Or to put it another way, the Inspector General formally looked into allegations that Hillary Clinton, while Secretary of State, inappropriately used a private email server. Politico.com reports that, yes, Hillary Clinton used a private email server for state business and also violated email retention rules. Clinton campaign spokesman Brian Fallon defended Mrs. Clinton's use of private email servers, saying that other senior officials and secretaries at the State Department do it too, and her use of the private account was allegedly known to the State Department. Fallon also noted that there is no evidence of any successful breach of the secretary's server. However, the Washington Post reports that a Romanian hacker, who allegedly broke the story of a private email server, pled guilty yesterday to hacking charges and admitted that he was responsible for a series of other high-profile intrusions. Investigators looked into the records of the Office of the Secretary of State going back to Madeleine Albright in 1997. What they also concluded was that other secretaries, including Colin Powell, failed to use proper email retention protocols when using a private email server. The report noted, however, that during Colin Powell's tenure, email was generally limited to internal use and a separate email account was sometimes needed to reach some people. The report also noted that Secretary Powell used his email less frequently than Mrs. Clinton. According to an FBI investigation, Mrs. Clinton violated secrecy rules while in office, allegedly sending 22 top-secret emails from her private servers without state-approved securities in place. The investigation acknowledged that Clinton attempted to comply with the request for evidence. However, the investigator general noted that they did not determine whether those were complete records. And finally, in tech news, ArsTechnica.com reports that members of the U.S. House introduced a plan to decrease the budget of the FCC so that until certain cases are resolved, the agency would be prevented from enforcing so-called net neutrality rules. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.